In this section, we're going to look at the failure criteria for composite materials. Now, in the last section, we looked at some uh, laminates under different loadings and actually did some design on those. And in doing so, we used the maximum stress failure criterion. That is, we assumed that when any of the stress components, sigma 1, sigma 2, or tau 1, 2, reach the strength associated with that component with a factor of safety built in, that's when failure would occur. So in other words, we did not assume any interaction between the stress components. Now sometimes that works okay, but uh, a lot of failures are going to be due to combined stresses. And so if you think about what we did in mechanics and materials, um, with isotropic materials, again, you can use the maximum stress criterion sometimes, but there are interactive criteria that fit the data better and generally will produce better results. So when you looked at ductile materials, you assumed that uh, failure was when the material yielded. And so yield criteria, von Mises and Max Scheer criteria, um, were used to predict yielding. If you had a brittle material, then the coulomb more or the modified more criteria, again, gave pretty good uh, results, pretty good uh, fit with data. But in, in uh, all those cases, you looked at a combined uh, interaction of the stresses. Now trying to apply that to composite materials gives you a few difficulties here. And so none of the ones that have been proposed, and there are a lot of them, none of them are universally accepted as being the best. We'll see a couple that maybe are more widely used than others, but none of them work perfectly for every loading condition. Um, first of all, the, the failure modes might be uh, uh, not all that clear. In other words, with ductile materials, we said, okay, yielding means failure. With brittle materials, failure is, uh, is fracture. But uh, a layer might fail due to uh, the fibers breaking, well, of course, that's that would be a, a, a catastrophic failure. But what if just the resin cracks? Well, that may be a failure, may not be for the whole laminate. The fiber might buckle. You might have uh, shear stresses between the layers. So all those things can be different failure modes, and none of them might necessarily mean that the laminate is going to fail. In other words, the uh, single layer might fail, but uh, at a load that's much less than what the ultimate failure of the laminate is going to be. And a good example of that would be a composite pressure vessel. Uh, when you uh, begin to pressurize the vessel, typically you're going to have the resin between the fibers begin to crack. But because there are fibers going in the opposite direction of that, uh, that usually does not indicate that the um, uh, vessel itself is, uh, is failing. And so it will usually hold a much higher pressure than uh, than the pressure at which that uh, resin cracking begins to begins to occur. So you can't just say that the failure of, of the resin uh, results in the catastrophic failure of the of the vessel. So with all that uh, kind of disclaimer in mind, a uh, couple of the uh, criteria that are used uh, pretty widely are the Sai Wu and the Hoffman criteria. And again, these are used to predict first ply failure. In other words, what's the weakest link of your laminate? And again, it works well for comparison purposes, but doesn't you know, none of these, as we said, always predict perfectly when a laminate's going to fail. And if, if we choose the Psi Wu criterion one parameter, a particular value, it becomes equivalent to the Hoffman criteria. Also, it reduces, if you're looking at isotropic materials, will reduce to the von Mises yielding criterion. So this one criteria will work for composite materials and for steel and aluminum. So uh, that's what we're going to use in our spreadsheet. And again, disclaimer here, remember that none of them work perfectly for all materials and all applications. And so failure predictions are useful, but they're not perfect. And so if it's a critical application, you certainly have to do physical testing uh, to verify your design. So let's talk about doing some simple uh, strength tests here. In this first one, uh, we've got the fibers all in the axial direction. We pull on it axial, so simple tensile test. And when sigma 1 reaches its failure, we call that failure strength capital X sub t, the axial tensile strength. If the fibers are 90 degrees to the direction of loading, then the failure is for sigma 2, and its value would be y sub t. And we do similar if we do compression tests in the axial direction with all the fibers in the axial direction. 
when sigma 1 reaches x of c, that would be the axial compressive strength, and the transverse compressive strength, again, if you did the uh, uh, compressing transverse to the fibers. And finally, with a torsion test, you can find the shear strength, uh, in-plane shear strength tau 1, 2, when it reaches a value of capital S, that's failure. The asterisks here just mean that you can report uh, compression strength as either being tensile, uh, excuse me, as being positive or negative. We're going to use in our um, uh, calculations, we're going to always enter those values as negative. So we'll say, we won't say the compressive strength is 150,000 psi, we'll enter it as minus 150,000 psi. So when the stress is negative, sigma 2 would be negative at failure, and we'll say and when that reaches, say, minus 150,000 psi, that's when we have failure. Now again, we could um, say that whenever one of these uh, strength value, stress values reaches the strength value that we have failure, that would be the maximum stress criterion, but again, no interaction, and so it works okay for some applications, but not for a lot. There's also a maximum strain criteria uh, similar to that, where we look at just the strain values instead of stress. Now, the Psi Hill criterion was one of the first that was uh, used widely for composite materials, and um, it's based on work that was done by Hill, who worked with metals. So he looked at metals that, that were rolled, and so when you, when you do the metal rolling, you end up with a different grain structure and so different strengths in the rolled and the transverse directions. Well, uh, Stephen Tsai at the Air Force Materials Lab uh, took Hill's work and applied it to composites and so hence called the Tsai Hill criterion. Now you can see here that um, the bottoms, the, the uh, denominators here have, are X, Y, and S. And whether it's XT or XC depends on what the signs are of sigma 1 and sigma 2, whether they're tensile or compressive. Now, later on, uh, Psi, uh, along with a guy named Wu at the Air Force Materials Lab, came up with a, a different criteria. About the same time, another criteria, the Hoffman criteria, came out. And both of them uh, looked at adding linear terms, you know, the uh, previously, we were seeing just uh, second order terms, but adding linear terms would give them a better fit to measure data. So with Sai Wu, it starts out by just looking at a second order polynomial. So the prediction is that failure occurs, um, you know, when this um, uh, polynomial is equal to one. So again, using the um, uh, initial notation and um, the summation notation, you can see there's a lot of terms of this, especially if you're looking in three dimensions. And you can apply this to a 3D state of stress. We're just going to look at plain stress because that gets complicated enough. As you can see, all these terms are based on the in-plane stresses, sigma 1, sigma 2, and tau 1, 2, which is sigma 6 in the contracted notation. Now remember, as we said, sigma 6 is equal to tau 1, 2. Um, also, these uh, strength terms Fji and Fij would have to equal each other because um, you know, the impact of having these two stresses doesn't matter which order we put them in, are going to be the same. So we can reduce that down just a little bit. Still got a good bit of terms here, but we'll, we're going to figure out what those are in the uh, next video. So we're going to look at uh, and um, kind of figure out what those strength terms are, and then we'll be able to work some problems with failure prediction.